Welcome to the Savvy Investor, where it's our job to help you thrive in an economy. The world of mutual fund management is a $15 trillion money-making machine. Today on the Savvy Investor, the truth about mutual funds. Welcome to the Savvy Investor. Each week, the Savvy Investor helps viewers just like you create and grow wealth, protect and preserve it, and distribute it in the most tax-efficient manner while alive and after you have passed. Our goal is to make you a better informed investor that hopefully leads to better results, but certainly less risk along the way. You can have financial security in any economy. Today is the day you can take control of your financial future and eliminate worry about your retirement forever. And now, The Savvy Investor with your host, Michael Kinnett. When you began working years ago, you probably started putting money away into some sort of retirement account. Maybe one that was offered by your employer, or maybe just an IRA, or quite frankly, a brokerage account. Every paycheck, you made sure to put away a little money for the future. You had a plan for that perfect retirement. You took control and made sure you were saving so that you could enjoy the retirement that you deserved. Every day, we see mutual fund commercials on TV espousing the virtues of long-term investing, and more importantly, long-term investing in mutual funds. It's a big business, and the mutual fund industry manages over $15 trillion. Plus, there's another $4 trillion in money market accounts. That's over $19 trillion all managed. That is a huge number. When we invest in mutual funds through our 401ks, 403bs. We invest in them directly with Vanguard and PIMCO and T. Rowe Price. And, hey, we even buy them through brokerage firms like Merrill Lynch and Edward Jones. There's over 8,000 mutual funds to choose from, and every day, we see commercials telling us to invest, invest, invest. Mutual funds are big business, but they come with big costs like fees, risk, and volatility. Today, we're going to get to the truth about investing in mutual funds, but before we go there, let's take a look at what's in the news. Our first piece comes from the Wall Street Journal. It's titled, The Hidden Cost of Mutual Funds. Portfolio managers can rack up steep expenses buying and selling securities, but that burden isn't reflected in the actual expense ratio. So how much does it actually cost to own the average mutual fund? According to the Wall Street Journal, it costs almost 1.31% for management fees, and that's not all. There's trading costs, another 1.44%, and some funds even have advertising fees, 12B1 fees that cost another quarter point. You're losing almost 3% right off the top, and you don't even know it. Do you see that in the prospectus? No, and we're gonna explain to you why a little bit later. Now, our next piece comes from US News. It's called, Index Funds Still Beat Most Managers. Do you think your fund manager has what it takes to beat the market? If so, the S&P may make you think twice. Over the last year, index funds beat money-managed mutual funds almost 90% of the time over a trailing three-year period. And index funds outperform managed funds a little more than 73% of the time. This is true for equity funds and bond funds. Why is this? Aren't we paying our money managers to make smart choices for us? Today, we're gonna help put you back in control of your retirement give you the knowledge you deserve so you can make smart money choices and have the retirement you've always imagined. You're watching The Savvy Investor, and we'll be right back. Call today to get your free mutual fund stress test to see if you are keeping what you've earned. Interested in learning more about planning for your financial future? Join Michael Kinnett, host of The Savvy Investor and best-selling author in person for an important, life-changing financial workshop on the following dates and start taking control of your future. If you are ready to discover the financial tools and strategies that can help you build the retirement of your dreams, just call 1-800-787-SAVVY today to reserve your spot. If you're in retirement or retiring in the next three to five years, you must read Michael Kinnett's best-selling book, Surviving the Perfect Storm. Best-selling author and National Quill Award winner, Michael Kinnett's Surviving the Perfect Storm is a must-read to prepare for your golden years. This amazing book can be yours absolutely free, but you must call 800-787-SAVVY. Supplies are limited, so be one of the first 25 callers to receive your free limited edition autograph copy of Surviving the Perfect Storm. Call 800 787 Savvy. Welcome back to the Savvy Investor. Today, we are exploring the world of mutual funds how they work, why they work, and should you still be using them? Now, we know that mutual funds are big business. We see the commercials every day, Vanguard, Fidelity. We know that brokerage firms love selling them to us. We've all seen Tommy Lee Jones and Ameriprise. 
that only has that little green arrow, and I think we all love the little kid day trading with E-Trade. With over $15 trillion in mutual funds, somebody's making a lot of money, and I suspect that over the last decade, it's not you. So what is it about mutual funds that have so many of us putting trillions of dollars into them? Let's go to our man on the street with Mike Macho and ask that very question. Your man on the street here, Mike Macho, with so few people knowing about mutual funds, we're here taking it to the streets to find out exactly what they do know. Do you own uh, mutual funds? No. Yes, I do. I don't. My husband does. Do you know how much you're paying in fees? Uh, not too much. Do you think that uh, mutual fund managers, the people that, that, that manage those funds, do you think they're 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 intelligent about the stuff or do you think it's just kind of a one size fits all everyone gets in that plan and doesn't matter what your particular type of situation is after 2008 I'm a little leery of a lot of things that are too far out of our control dealing with people that we don't really know um, we like to keep things a little closer to home would you recommend uh, everyone uh, you know being more knowledgeable about their retirements and about you know uh, their finances and things like that absolutely because at 46 I don't know the answers to that, and I need to know, so I, I do need to look more into it. There you go, Mike. You heard it for yourself. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Mike. Another great piece from our man on the street. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by our expert panelist, Mike Lester, and we're going to discover the truth about mutual funds. You're watching The Savvy Investor, and we'll be right back. Now keep in mind that just like any tool, there's the right tool for the right job and a wrong tool for the wrong job. We've just scratched the surface here and you'll want to know more about how today's conversation might or might not fit your needs. Ask about fees, surrender charges, market risk, interest rate risks, how the guarantees work, liquidity, and much more. Remember, the right tool for the right job. Welcome back to The Savvy Investor. As our good friend Mike Macho showed us, there seems to be a lot of confusion out there about how mutual funds work. Now, imagine after hearing all of this, if we could help you create a strategy, help you create a plan you could put into place today that could substantially reduce the fees you pay, the risk you're taking, and put you on a clear path to retirement. Well, that's exactly why we invited our expert, Mike Lester. He's the founder and CEO of Talon Wealth Management with offices throughout the state of Florida. Mike, welcome to The Savvy Investor. It's a pleasure to be here, David. So, so Mike, Let's talk about the basics of a mutual fund. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we heard what the man on the street had to say, but let's talk about it. Uh, tell us exactly, what is a mutual fund? I mean, describe what one looks like. How does it work? So if people think about mutual funds, right, and, but they don't always look at the breakdown of a mutual fund or what's in it. So essentially what a mutual fund company has done is they've taken a group of equities, so stocks, okay? They've also taken a lot of times mutual funds, and there's some sort of a balance there, right? There's a percentage of stocks, a percentage of mutual funds, um, they weigh things like, you know, risk. Um, a lot of the people that we talk to every single week, sometimes it'll just be the, they'll put a number on the fund, you know, like the 2025 or the 2015, if you're looking at your 401k, everybody's seen those. But essentially mutual funds, is, it's a group, or, or stocks and bonds typically that have been grouped together in a fund. And the idea is that there's um, uh, some management of that. The idea is that there's diversification there. I mean, that's what we think when we think about mutual funds or, or the average person thinks when they think about mutual funds. So a big basket with stocks or bonds in there. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so so we're looking at this big basket and we're mm -hmm. deciding to buy a mutual fund and, and who runs the mutual funds? There's a manager involved. Sure, you've got a manager. Typically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And, mm -hmm. and he's making decisions on what to buy and sell? They are, right? Okay. So they're making, uh, the idea is that they're gonna make decisions for you and, and your hope is that they're gonna make better decisions that you'd make on your own. So, okay, so we have this basket. Let's talk about some, some of the features of a mutual fund. Okay. We have a basket of stocks and or bonds in there, mm -hmm. and uh, some managers running it. Tell us, how, how does this manager do? Managers, good job, bad job? How do, how do mutual fund managers well, obviously, kind of Well, obviously, Mike, it's gonna, it's gonna depend on the fund. So a lot of what we do at Talent Wealth Management is a lot of analysis. If somebody comes in with a, 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 an account, right? So they've got their brokerage account. We look at that. There's a lot of mutual funds in there, let's say. Uh, each one of those mutual funds is gonna rank very differently depending on some reports that we can run on that. Um, but for the most part, one of the issues when it comes to mutual funds is 
they're measured against um, a standard, right? Or they're measured against a benchmark. An indice of some sort. Like an indice of some sort, right. Okay. And so, so how do you measure your success? Well, you have to measure it compared to something else. So you mentioned S&P. It's very, very common um, for, for a, a fund to compare itself against the performance of the S&P 500. And one of the things that we find when you compare it to an indice, the S&P 500, a lot of the others, is a lot of these mutual fund companies have a very hard time um, beating or even equaling those indices. And I, I've seen numbers in the 70 to 90% of the time, you're paying, and I want to talk about that, you're paying mm -hmm. a mutual fund manager right. to buy and sell stocks and bonds inside your mutual fund, mm -hmm. and 70 to 90% of the time, he underperforms whatever indice he says measure me against. Right, so, you know, how do you think that makes the investor feel, right? So I'm paying you extra to do worse than if I just went out and bought the S&P. So that's why we hear things like, well, um, just invest in the S&P 500 ETF and forget the manager. You know, for, the, for those of you who are watching whoever on TV, right, right, and they start talking about that, they're starting to point out some of these inefficiencies, right? So of mutual why, funds. Of mutual funds. Right, right. So why pay extra to do worse? No right. Well, yeah. I mean, you're paying to fail. Right. I mean, that just doesn't make sense, fail to fa pay to fail. Sure. So, so let's talk about, now, we, we know that a significant portion of mutual fund managers, and I know it, not, not my manager, my manager never underperforms, but, <laughs> but the, the mutual fund managers underperform the indice, mm -hmm. and we're paying them. Let's talk about the breakdown of those fees. I mean, we okay. alluded to them earlier in the show, but let's break down some of these fees that you're paying on a mutual fund. Sure, so there's several fees. Um, typically, people are, are most... Um, uh, most aware of the what they call like the net expense ratio or the expense ratio on that. Mm -hmm. that, that but the, the issue is that's only part of it. Okay. Right. So um, if you were to call um, uh, call up your company and say, okay, I want to know what I'm paying in fees. They're going to go right to that expense ratio. Right. They're going to tell you what that is. But the management if, expense. The management expense. Right. Right. right? Um, but they're leaving out some other things that can be very key depending on what company you're with. Um, yeah, transition. Uh, transaction costs? Transaction costs, mm -hmm. right. Um, in addition to that, toll B1 fees. Right. Um, if you don't know what all of those fees are and what those fees add up to, um, it, it tells a much, much different story. There's a reason why these mutual funds are underperforming those averages. It's because it's, and for a lot of times, it's because it's more expensive, right, right to own it. Those fees make a big, big difference. You have to overcome those fees before you're even, you know, before you're even or to be profitable. So the 12B1 fees, you know, to be sure, those, those are those fees that like when you see the little green arrow say follow the green arrow to retirement, this will take you to retirement, or, or that little string out in the middle of the park that says here's your number. Correct. So, so we're paying for those advertising fees. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and then let's talk about these transaction costs because, you know, I've called companies before and they say they don't have any, you know, there, there's a difference between a, a loaded mutual fund and a no loaded mutual fund. Describe Correct. that. So right. What's that? <clears throat> so uh, mutual funds fall into a few different categories, right? So, so when you refer to no load, what that means essentially is there's no cost up front to get in and there's no cost on the backside to get out. So, all so no commission basically being paid to anybody. That's right. right. So, okay. so, so up front <clears throat> or at the end, you're not paying something. Um, those a lot of times are marketed as, you know, people sort of take pride in that. Oh, I do no load mutual funds, meaning I'm not going to charge you commission to get in and I'm not going to charge you commission to get out. That leaves the other alternatives, which would be either you pay some sort of a commission to get in mm -hmm. before you get into those other fees that you pay, or if you were to get out before a certain amount of time, you're going to pay a fee to get out. And the, the ones where you pay the fee at the end, those can also start to feel a little bit uh, illiquid because you're more or less paying a penalty if you get out ahead of time. Sure. And it'll, it'll cause people to maybe buy and hold, even if they don't like what the markets are doing. So, and we're really talking about A shares, B shares, C shares. Correct. Right. Yep. So if, you, if you're buying a mutual fund and it's got uh, an A share, B share, or C share, that has to do with the commission being paid. Yep. Um, the A share is up front, B share back load, C share, kind of an ongoing fee. Correct, yeah. And then the, if it doesn't have the A share, B share thing going on, then mm -hmm. probably a no load. Correct. But certainly it's one of the things you want to discuss with your advisor. Absolutely. But let's talk about these, these transaction costs because okay. those things can just be absolutely outrageous sure. in some situations. That's right. So you want to know um, how often that mutual fund is, is, is traded. And right. they also, they refer to it as turnover. You can actually pull that number. You know, how often are they going through that account? Um, and, you know, are those fees just piling up, the ones you don't see necessarily, right. based on them trading? And that can also cause a lot of other issues, right? Tax, tax issues, that sort of thing. Because you have a big basket, and, and every time somebody gives the mutual fund manager money, right. he has to go buy more stocks. Absolutely. They can't, they can't, they're not working if they're leaving it in cash position. And, and if somebody wants their money back, they have to sell. Exactly. And there's a transaction of costs associated with that. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to continue our conversation with Mike Lester when we come back from our break, and I want to delve into some of the inefficiencies. You mentioned some tax problems, sure. uh, when you can buy and sell, right. um, exactly how they're used for, uh, for, for people in 401ks versus not 401ks. Right, very common. Yep. You're watching The Savvy Investor. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Call today to get your free mutual fund stress test to see if you're keeping what you've earned. Interested in learning more about planning for your financial future? Join Michael Kinnett, host of The Savvy Investor and best-selling author in person for an important life-changing financial workshop on the following dates and start taking control of your future. If you are ready to discover the financial tools and strategies that can help you build the retirement of your dreams, just call 1-800-787-SAVVY today to reserve your spot. Today we're helping you take control of your retirement. You deserve the retirement you imagine, and we're gonna help you get there. There's a famous quote by Robert Kiyosaki, and he's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it goes like this. If you don't like the idea that most of money spent on lottery tickets supports the government programs, you should know that most of the earnings from mutual funds support investment advisors and mutual fund managers' retirement. Now before Mike and I get back to our conversation about mutual funds and how they work, I wanna take a look at our viewer email. From Chris in Nashville, Tennessee, Chris asks exactly what is reverse dollar cost averaging? And that's a great question because people are confused about that. It is great. And so imagine a scenario. Most of us understand dollar cost averaging in terms of, well, I'm not going to go all in at the same time, right? So, and I'm going to buy into a market over time. And then I'll get an average price, right? right? Hopefully and to smooth it out. Hopefully smooth it out. I don't want to buy, you know, uh, when it's too high, you right. know, sort of a thing. But the assumption that you're making is that the market's moving up. Right. Over that period of time. And you have an average cost that, that, that is lower than what it's going to grow to. Right. Well, then you look at what would be the opposite of that? Well, dollar cost averaging in a down market, right? right. Or as the market's going down. And taking money out. And taking money out. Right. Right. So, and then, like you said, apply income to right. that. So, if you're in a situation where you need income from your portfolio and your dollar cost averaging into a market as it's going down further and further and further, um, bottom line, it doesn't work out very well. Yeah, it's right? a, bad, a bad idea. That's right. Yeah, another way to look at it, another term, you know, for another time, sequence of returns, right? When did the return come based on when you take money out of the portfolio? Right. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think there's lots of, lots of statistics out there that show that, you know, if you, if, you, if you think about the last decade, 2000 to 2010, if you retired in 2000, you started taking money out of your portfolio, just a systematic withdrawal like a right. lot of people do for income, sure. um, you would, you'd be out of money. I mean, you're in a world of trouble. Yeah, because uh, look at 20, 2000, you know, to 2010. Yeah, right? tough, tough years, tough sure. years to be retired. Now, Rachel from uh, State College in Pennsylvania, she says, are all mutual funds sold with some sort of commission? That's a great question, right? Because we spent a little bit of time talking about um, different types of mutual funds. Mm -hmm. and, and so the answer to that question is, is no, right? Because you can get the no load. Right. Um, but there are a lot of advisors out there and you can, there'd be a classification, a letter after the fund, right? right. That'll explain this. But investors need to know that's a big thing or, or, or a big part of what we do at Talon Wealth Management is educate individuals on either what they're considering or what they currently hold. Because you need to know what the costs are. And if you're paying a commission, that's just another cost on top of the other costs that are included. Just in the takes mutual you that fund. much longer to break even or, or make your money back. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and, and most, most mutual funds, if they're sold with a load, are somewhere between the four and five, maybe six percent. Right. So it can take a pretty big whack, take you three or four or five years to catch back up, all things being equal. Right. An example of that would be you invest $100,000, but only 95000 of it actually goes to work. So how right. long does it take you get, to get back to where you started? Right. Because you paid that fee up front. Right. Yeah. So one of the things that we talked about when we were at the break, we talked a lot about the fees, mm -hmm. but let's talk a little bit about the, the risk of owning a mutual fund, the diversification. Diversification, it's a word everybody's familiar with, right? Uh, but almost, in my opinion, almost no one understands, they know, they know the idea, right. which is uh, if I'm diversified in the markets, the, the perception is that I'm protected. Right? Should markets fall a great deal? And 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 by protected, you mean that, that, that if I'm diversified, not all my assets are going to drop, not all my holdings are going to drop at the same time because right. I'm diversified right. or, among or, asset classes. Or to oversimplify, uh, if one's going down, the other's going up, so I'll you know it's right. a wash right. more or less. Um, so it's used all the time in our industry, and most people when they're sitting on a portfolio full of mutual funds and they're they're typically not all in one mutual fund, right, Mike? So uh, they'll have a basket of mutual funds, which is just baskets of stocks inside right. those mutual funds, um, 
their perception of the reason why they have several different mutual funds is because they feel more diversified in doing that. Right. So because five's better than five's better than three, and seven's got to be better than five. That's right. So right. that's the theory right, that, right behind it. Um, but what we know and what we want to share with investors is just because you have several different positions in your portfolio and just because each mutual fund has a different name or a different title does not necessarily mean you're diversified. Those mutual funds can actually own the same positions and so if you, if those, they call it overlap, so if those positions are the same, they overlap and now it's watering down that diversification. Another thing that we look at or, or ask people to think about or even, you know, your viewers um, to think about is how does your portfolio do in 2008? <laughs> because I guarantee how many people went right, into right. 2008 thinking I'm diversified. Well, their advisor told them they were diversified. Right. And, right. and where they get the information, they got it from the advisor that they're paying right. to do a better job of picking things than they could do on their own. Um, so think back to 2008 if you're an investor. And then what happened to your portfolio? They did obviously have a perception that they were diversified. But if you lost 10, 20, 30 percent 40 or 50 40 or 50 depending on where you were um, you you're not diversified or you weren't diversified you're actually what they call correlated right right to those markets so 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 to be clear you know if, if I have two mutual funds and I think I have two different type of mutual funds but when I actually look at them let's assume each mutual fund has a hundred stocks in it mm -hmm. it turns out that this one has a hundred and this one has a hundred but of these 200 stocks, there's 100 that are exactly alike. So sure. I really don't have 200 different stocks. I might have 100, Correct. as the case may be. Ab absolutely. Okay. And so it, it's, it's perceptions aren't always right. what they seem, right? And then I mentioned correlation, uh, not a good thing, right. right? You definitely want to participate in markets to the upside. Um, so that part feels great. Didn't feel too good in 2008 if you followed it down almost 40%. Right. And in some cases, um, even well, more let than me that. ask you this. What, what is the solution? I mean, if I'm going in to talk to an advisor, if I'm coming in to see somebody, if I come to see you right. and I bring you my 6, 8, 10, 12 mutual funds mm -hmm. and I say, look, my, I'm, I'm diversified. Right. I mean, I know you're going to look at my fees because you said you looked at that. Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to look at how, how well I've done against the overall market, you know, my manager's done. Correct. But you're looking at my diversification. Mm -hmm. what, what are you doing different? I mean, how, how, how should a, an investor look at this differently than just, well, I bought 10 mutual funds? So. A big advantage that we have at Talon Wealth Management is we don't have to look at things through this, you know, what I would consider fa fairly narrow, you know, vision when it comes to, well, everybody that comes to Talon Wealth Management, we don't have a corporation that states everybody who comes in those doors is going to get mutual funds. And then we're going to come up with a way to um, convince you that we can do a better job of putting you in mutual funds that, by the way, you could just open up an account and go get on your own. But the right. reason you're going to pay us in that scenario is to do a better job. We, we're, we're not giving you that perception. So we're going to take your existing portfolio and we're going to run an analysis on it, right? Because it's very, very important not only to know the fees, right? right? But you want to know what your average rate of return was over right. a particular period of time. The which, risk. The risk associated with it. What's your standard deviation in there? These are all terms that, you know, we can't define today, but they're all very, very important. And the other thing that's going to show us is, are you correlated? Now, I already mentioned that if in 2008, right, you, you lost a lot of money, then yeah, you're correlated. But we want to take um, that correlation out. We want to build portfolios that are uh, diversified. And at Talent Wealth Management, we believe that tactical asset allocation is a much better method than just tr using a computer program, which a lot of companies do, to try to pick uh, mutual funds in a, in, in, and arrange them in a way that in theory is diversified. Um, but most of us found out in 2008, we were just paying additional fees for portfolios that weren't diversified, we wound up being correlated and lost a whole lot of money. How much better off would you be today if you had had a strategy <laughs> or a portfolio that didn't lose that much in 2008? Right, right. right? I mean, the 100% of the market upside, you would have got more of that upside instead of just recouping what you lost. Correct. Yep. All right, so, so having a more uh, tactical approach on, on how you're as actually allocating the assets makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about some of the risk, we've talked about some of the, uh, the, the fees and, and some important issues. What about tax implications? Because to me that's always a big picture too. So ta I mean it's, it's a really, really big deal. So uh, when you get into taxes and, and, and how mutual funds are taxed, um, they, they have to follow certain rules in that mutual fund, right? And um, uh, so if that prospectus for that mutual fund states they have to have a specific, a specific percentage of stocks to a specific percentage of bonds, they can't just up and decide um, they're going to reallocate that. Right. right. It's in the prospectus they have to stick to it. Um, going back to taxes, 
Um, because they have to maintain that mix, if a position, you know, if they want to get rid of a position, that could create a, ta a tax situation, but they have to replace it with another, and they have to maintain that balance. So taxes in mutual funds, uh, because of what they're essentially forced to do every time new money comes in or every time um, they want to get rid of an existing position, um, you could very, very easily wind up being taxed um, or getting a 1099 at the end of a year where you actually lost money. Yeah, right. so 2008, you're getting hit with the 1099. Yeah. So, How great insult, would that to, be? insult to yeah. injury. Insult right. to injury. Yeah. So, so we have some great takeaways from today's conversation, and we're going to get to those in a few minutes. But you have a great report on the truth about mutual funds. And yes. this, this thing breaks down the fees, breaks down the risk people are taking, it breaks down how poorly these managers are actually doing. You need to give us a call and get this report out to you as soon as we can. We're going to take a break here, but when we come back, we're going to do our takeaways of the day. You're watching The Savvy Investor, and we'll be right back. If you have questions, drop us a line. Each week, our experts will address viewer mail, and you can email us your questions or go to our website, thesavvyinvestortv.com, and click on Contact Us. Interested in learning more about planning for your financial future? Join Michael Kinnett, host of The Savvy Investor and best-selling author in person for an important, life-changing financial workshop on the following dates and start taking control of your future. If you are ready to discover the financial tools and strategies that can help you build the retirement of your dreams, just call 1-800-787-SAVVY today to reserve your spot. Today we're joined by our expert, Mike Lester, and he explained the truth about mutual funds and what you should know when you're planning for your financial future. He gave us three takeaways. And number one, fees do matter. Make sure you understand not only how much you're paying, but what you're getting for that fee. You could be paying an enormous amount of fees right off the top, and in some cases, the simple fact is, high fund fees can take away a third of your retirement nest egg over your lifetime. And number two, asset allocation matters. You should understand the strategy not only to grow your money, but how you're going to create the income you're going to need during retirement. And number three, manage mutual funds underperform. More often than not, your actively managed mutual fund underperforms the market. And think about this, you're paying him to fail. Thanks again to Mike Lester for joining us and helping us make smart money choices. And thank you for joining us today. We'll see you, the Savvy Investor, next week. Every retiree's goal from our perspective is to take the least amount of risk possible to accomplish your goals. Too often financial advisors and stockbrokers assess your risk tolerance. Just because you can tolerate the risk doesn't mean you have to accept it. Remember, at the end of the day, it isn't how much you make, it is how much you keep. If you would like more information about today's topic, you can contact our offices or visit us on the web at thesavvyinvestortv.com. When you visit our website, sign up for our free weekly newsletter where we give you tidbits each week to help you make smart money choices.